Today, Marvel turns into ultimate despair. You're used to the e enigmatic and hopeful superheroes who always save the day, but what if everything went wrong? What if the spider that bit Peter Parker actually made him into a slow dying virus? Or if Bruce Banner was turned into a disgusting mass of cancer instead of the usual giant Hulk? A couple examples of what can go wrong will go wrong in this Marvel episode of Disturbing Comics. Now usually we talk about random releases, non-superhero stuff, but those two big companies, Marvel and DC, have seasoned in some very disturbing stories. Marvel's Ruins, written by Warren Ellis with art by Therese and Cliff Nielsen, along with Chris Moyler, is a dark, hopeless world where all your favorite superheroes die horribly. Spider-Man didn't get to become Spider-Man because he got a radioactive disease from it. Jean Grey is just a prostitute willing to throw it down for $20. She must be from Dirty Docks. The X-Men are imprisoned and mutilated so they can't use their powers. This world has always stuck to me as a kid and I'd like to bring it to you today. Ruins is a parody of Marvels, a four issue origin of the Marvel Universe. Ruins takes the main character of that, Phil Sheldon, a reporter, and has him going around the United States wondering why this world is so ultimate despair. The artwork is so nightmarish too, it sort of reminds me of that Arkham Asylum story, a serious house on a serious earth. If you want to see what happens, including all the messed up parts, stay tuned for the breakdown. Cue to Gohan. Currently in California, Phil Sheldon is a reporter on a mission to figure out what exactly is going on. Above him, a plane is shot down by the National Guard, a plane that housed all the members of the Avengers. Yes, every single Avenger is dead, and the National Guard are happy about it, parading around with Cap's shield and Thor's hammer. He ain't worthy to hold that. Except, the Avengers in this universe aren't universal saviors. They were a revolutionary secessionist group, domestic terrorists according to the government. Phil knows that this shouldn't be right. He thinks that the Avengers should be heroes to the world, not some secret paramilitary group. What stopped them from becoming heroes? Here, Daredevil never became Daredevil. He died from the accident that would have gave him his powers. Honestly, I bet the real Daredevil from the normal universe wouldn't mind that. <laughs> Soon, Phil goes into a bar only to get hassled by Wolverine. Wolverine is a mutant who had animantium applied to his bones. In this universe, that animantium is slowly and painfully killing him. It's causing his skin to literally drip from his body, and his mind is completely gone. See how things just went wrong? In Nevada, there's a Cree reservation. Cree is an alien species in the Marvel Universe. This reservation is a jail that is highly radioactive. Phil needs a radioactive suit just to walk in and all of the Kree are affected by the radioactive poisoning to where they are almost walking skeletons. Not to mention the children are there just living a life of death. Phil talks to Marvell, who is falling apart because of cancer. His bones are rotting to the point that you can smell them. He tells Phil that he hates humanity for bombing them out of space. Granted, Marvell did plan on invading Earth. But Silver Surfer here kind of messed everything up. Silver Surfer killed himself by clawing his chest open in a futile effort to experience breathing again. He's an alien that doesn't need to breathe ever since becoming Galactus' slave. Well, him dying in the middle of space spewed out cosmic energy that blinded the Kree, allowing the humans to nuclear bomb them out of space. Now, Marvell is dying in pure despair. Everybody there is, and all the dead bodies and children have to be burned. So, now let's mention the United States government, picked by Gwen Stacy of all people. <laughs> I bet she's having a great life in this universe compared to the normal one. Notice something weird on the relocated White House grounds. The president 
in this universe is President X, who in the regular Marvel stories is Professor X, the leader of the X-Men, the Martin Luther King of mutants. However, in this world of ruins, President X doesn't like other mutants, even though he is one. He is actually authorizing airstrikes on the Genosha country. Genosha is like the Israel for mutants. Why is President X killing his own people? Now we are in Washington DC. After the White House was relocated, DC is just a world of vomit and drug use. Phil is here to meet with Nick Fury. Fury, he, he's still some kind of government agent. He knows that Phil is dying actually, which is what sparked Phil to go on this journey in the first place. Fury punches Phil when he thinks Phil is trying to implicate him with the Avengers. Remember, the Avengers in this world are basically terrorists. Still, Fury is far gone, probably after Captain America introduced him to cannibalism back during the World War II. Out of nowhere, Jean Grey comes and offers her prostitution services for $20. Fury shoots her to death and then immediately turns the gun to himself, making sure that Phil knows he has no relation to those domestic terrorists. Fury creeps me out the most, actually. He basically submitted to this world and didn't care that everything was bad, and then added himself to the kill count with a smile. In Chicago, Phil meets with Rick Jones. Rick Jones is the guy that Bruce Banner saved when he stumbled upon a gamma ray bomb test. Instead of doing what superhero sidekicks do, Rick Jones is addicted to morphine. Morphine being a treatment for cancer means that Rick Jones has cancer, even after he was saved by Bruce Banner. Now in the regular universe, Bruce became the Hulk, a giant strong monster. In this universe, his body imploded. Tumors and growths become spontaneous, and overall, his entire body just became this, a walking ball of cancer. Issue 1 ends with Phil tripping over Frank Castle, or the Punisher's, dead body. Why is everything going wrong? This is the universe where Murphy's Law is at its best. Issue 2 is where we will conclude. So far, it's the artwork that gives it to me, like the cover of Magneto here. His eyes are white and mouth is crudely open. It gave me nightmares when I was a kid. Phil meets with Raven Darkholm on a plane. Raven Darkholm is Mystique, the shapeshifter. For some reason, she has multiple personality disorder. After taking on so many disguises, her body implodes on itself because of the disorder, and she dies painfully and bloody. The government come in to remove her body, the same government nobody likes. One of the agents pushes a protester out of the way, but that protester had machinery attached to his body to control his powers. That hippie is Magneto, who can't control his magnetism like the regular one can. So what happens is a similar thing to what happened in Spider-Man 2. Remember when Octavius' experiment went wrong and metal starts flying towards the fusion? Metal flies from everywhere, planes, teeth fillings, iron and blood. This guy here, he died hard. He had an intense neural hemorrhage just from being too close to Magneto. Afterwards, we see what happened to the rest of the famous mutants. In regular Marvel, they are the X-Men, but President X imprisoned them. Wilson Fisk is the prison warden, showing him all the mutilated X-Men. Mutilated so they can't use their powers. Cyclops had his eyes blinded after he killed his family on accident. Nightcrawler is just chewing on his own tail for some reason. Quicksilver had to be reduced to no arms and no legs. These mutants doomed to die in pain and constantly made fun of by President X. So we're coming to a close. Phil relaxes in the most hopeful frames of the story. He is approached by a little girl who invites him to a picnic. This was the best hopeful part of the story. Also, this art style is done with this page. Afterwards, the art style changes. It's said that Thor in the Ruins world is Donald Blake who ate too many hallucinogenic mushrooms. However, in the beginning, Thor's hammer is seen being held by the National Guard. So I suppose it could mean that there are two different Thors? Hey, did the MCU even use that whole Donald Blake alter ego thing? Ghost Rider? He didn't make a deal with Mephisto. Instead, he was suicidal after a hard life 
and lit his head on fire in a grand stunt, riding through the desert as his face melted off painfully. While writing his book titled Marvels, Phil has a dream of those marvels. This is how the world should be, but it's instead a representation of Murphy's Law. Lastly, Phil meets with Ben Grimm, who skipped out on a trip to go to space with Reed Richards and them. Instead of becoming the Fantastic Four, they were killed by cosmic rays horribly. Phil has been dying this entire issue, and the reason why is because of my favorite fictional character, Peter Parker. Peter was bit by a radioactive spider in one of his experiments. Instead of giving him spider powers, it made him an infected mutant who is dying painfully. Well, Peter infected Phil prior to the story, and Phil dies in an alley before he can finish writing his Marvel's story. That's it. So that's pretty much all there is to ruins. Ever since I was young, it was one of the first disturbing things I could see. The pigs of Spider-Man and, and Hulk specifically gave me nightmares. If you like this video, you might suggest other disturbing superhero stuff. Now, as to why this world is so dark and scary compared to the regular Marvel world, Phil thinks that the trigger was either Captain America turning crazy during World War II and cannibalizing people, or the cosmic storm that killed Marvel's first family. I just think this world is just bad for the sake of it. You know, those upper beings of Marvel just decided, you know what, let's just make everything hell. It's not much I can say afterwards because it's straight to the point, but it's one of my favorites. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. Click the like button if the previous sentence fit you perfectly. I will see you guys with the next comic we check out. Thanks for watching. Spooky out.